In 2004, when Nintendo announced the successor to the Game Boy Advance, the Nintendo DS, it was to become the highest selling handheld ever, tucked away slightly behind the PlayStation 2, in units sold at just over 154 million. But it wasn't just one handheld that sold all those units. There was a total of four iterations across the Nintendo DS line. Spanning 2004 to 2012, Nintendo has never been afraid to iterate, identifying shortcomings of their hardware and acting on them. Since the early days of the Game Boy hardware to the current day with the new 3DS, hardware iterations are a part of Nintendo's handheld DNA. Undoubtedly the most popular in the DS line was the DS Lite, which we've covered before on the channel. But with underpowered performance compared to its competition, the Sony PSP, Nintendo aimed to bridge the gap with a new iteration. Known as the Nintendo DSi, it released in Japan in late 2008 and the rest of the world in early 2009. The DSi sits nicely between the DS and the next generation 3DS as a system with its own identity. The I in DSi is said to stand for individual. The system was designed and set to take advantage of individual creativity. Although fully compatible with Nintendo DS games, gone is the Game Boy Advance slot from the older Nintendo DS and DS Lite hardware. The Game Boy Advance slot was the original entry point that led to the demise of the security on the original DS. The DSi also comes with two cameras, front and rear facing, a web browser, online connectivity out of the box and an all new operating system. To take advantage of these enhancements, the technical specifications were beefed up over the original DS. The system still retains the same ARM9 and ARM7 dual CPUs, however the main ARM9 runs at double the clock speed at 133MHz. Main memory was also increased to 16MB, four times that of the Nintendo DS. The system now comes with 256MB of flash memory and also comes with an expandable SD card slot for up to 32GB. The DSi XL takes the same specs and features of the DSi and comes with two 4.2 inch LCD screens and an all round better battery life. One of the main features that sets the DSi apart from the DS is DSiWare, a service designed specifically to the Nintendo DSi. DSiWare was an online service provided by Nintendo that featured exclusive downloadable apps and games usually for a cheap price. The online store known as the DSi Shop was the place you could download DSiWare games with some notable standouts. But sadly, just like the Wii Shop closure recently in March of 2019, the DSi Shop and DSiWare services all ended in March of 2017. Just like the closure of the Wii Shop on the Nintendo Wii, there's no easy way to get DSiWare games on your DSi anymore, unless you mod the system. So if you are looking to pick up your own Nintendo DSi, the good news is on eBay they are still very, very cheap to acquire. This one here cost me $30. The DSi's usually start from around $25, but of course, you know, you're going to pay more depending on condition. This one here has pretty good screens. They're a little scratched up, but nothing too bad. Uh, it works. The, you know, the, the cameras still work. Everything looks good on this particular device. So you can pick up a DSi quite cheap. Because the DSi has the same slot one as the Nintendo DSi, DS before it, that obviously means the games are compatible with each other. It also means you can use third party flashcards with homebrew on them and use them on the Nintendo DSi. Let's go ahead and take a look at the world of homebrew on the Nintendo DSi and the different methods to exploit the system. When the DSi was originally launched in 2008, Nintendo had patched the previous exploits with the DS, but it didn't take long. The Ace Card 2i was the first flashcard on the market utilizing the slot 1 cartridge port. It worked well, but did not take advantage of any of the DS specific features. Now before I mention this, standard disclaimer applies. This may not work for you depending on the firmware revision that you're running on your Nintendo DSi. The R4 Gold card works just fine on the Nintendo DSi. This was the same card that I used on my Nintendo DS Lite. In fact, I did not need to do anything. I just removed it from the DS Lite and inserted it into the DSi and launched the icon and as expected it works. All my homebrew is intact and it runs just fine. 
The thing is, however, flashcards aren't the best solution for homebrew on the DSi because they don't take advantage of any of the DSi's features. In other words, it runs everything in DS mode. You can't run DSiWare from here. You don't have access to the CPU power of the ARM9 processor at 133 MHz. You don't get access to the 16 MB of RAM. You can't use the camera. You're basically just running a Nintendo DS in a DSi. The Nintendo DSi was discontinued by Nintendo in 2012 in favor of the next generation 3DS as we know. And in March of 2017, the DSi shop was taken offline as well, which meant that you could no longer install and purchase any DSiWare onto your Nintendo DSi. But the good news is, and you guys know what I'm going to say, is that hackers have come up with new methods of exploiting the DSi in order to continue to run DSiWare onto your Nintendo DSi in 2019 and beyond. So to be absolutely Absolutely clear, DSi exploits have been around for a while. Nothing about what I've said is new information. The problem is that current exploits themselves have a reliance on either downloading an application, in this case Flipnote Studio, from the DSi store, which is obviously no longer in service. This means that if you didn't already have it installed on your DSi, then you're out of luck. But all that has changed with a new method just released in May of 2019 that works 100% on all Nintendo DSi systems, and it's very easy to install. This new exploit, known as Memory Pit, works on all Nintendo DSi and DSi XL systems. It exposes a simple flaw on the SD card, and I will walk through the technical details of the exploit shortly. But for now, let's test this out for ourselves. Take any old SD card, format it as FAT32, then download the Memory Pit exploit, link will be in the description below. At the root level of the SD card, create a folder called private, and then underneath that, create another folder called DS. Underneath that, create another folder called app. Then lastly, create the folder called 484E494A. Then extract the pit.bin file into this folder. This will install the exploit, but we still need a homebrew launcher to run. Download the homebrew menu from GitHub, Link will be in the description below. Open it up and extract the boot.nds file onto the root of the SD card. Then install the SD card back into the DSi and open up the camera app. Select the SD card, then click Album. And with any luck, you'll be in the homebrew menu ready to load your homebrew on your Nintendo DSi. So what's actually going on here? How does this hack actually work? Like always, the best hacks are often the simplest ones, and this one falls into that category. When you snap pictures with the DSi camera, the file that we installed onto our SD card called pit.bin is used to keep metadata and index information of all the pictures stored on the card. So, when you scroll through the images, the pit.bin file contains all the information needed to locate the next image and display it. The file also has a header. The header contains information about the number of images, as well as a field that determines the size of the header itself. Some years ago, some initial hacking and progress was done on this particular method. The header size field was altered to exceed the size of the file itself, but it wasn't certain if this would allow the DS to be exploited or not. The developer of Memory Pit, Shutterbug2000, who had previously worked on other exploits for the DSi, revised the same method, but instead changed the offset to point to custom photo entries that contained a pointer to the memory location where pit.bin is loaded, and from here was simply able to access another pointer to look at the address of where his custom code is, and the camera application jumps to that pointer to simply run the exploitable code. And that's it, it's quite simple to do. When I talked to Shutterbug2000 about the exploit, he let me know that it only took him around two to three hours to code from discovery to completion. The DSi camera was chosen for this exploit because it was the only application to access the SD card. The other exploitable application was known as Flipnote Studio, but not all systems have it installed anymore as it was only downloadable from the DSi store, which has since been closed in 2017. Memory Pit is just the beginning, however. To take full advantage of the DSi Homebrew, you will want to install Unlaunch, a boot menu replacement that also has brick protection, Twilight Menu, an open source replacement for the DSi System menu, and optionally a custom firmware known as Hiya CFW. With these tools, you unlock the power of the DSi and can run everything from the SD card, including DSiWare, which normally installs itself onto the internal NAND. Now normally I would walk you through installing these with you, but video guides of this fashion tend to get outdated quickly and it's always recommended that you use an up-to-date web-based guide, so I will leave a link in the description below to what I use. 
Although the DSi lost its Game Boy Advance slot, with Twilight menu it comes pre-configured with GBA Runner 2, which will play all your Game Boy Advance games. There are also built-in emulators for Game Boy, NES, Super NES, and Sega Genesis. You can also launch DS backups fine if you want to, and I recommend you take a look at Twilight menu if you are looking to mod your Nintendo DSi. The Nintendo DSi may have only been an iteration from the DS line, but its enhancements were significant and set Nintendo on a path to what would become the 3DS. The DSi had the features, power and performance, and with the upgraded screens, games looked the best, at least in my opinion. Over time, the DSi became the DS of choice, shipping over 40 million units across its lifespan, and revisiting the handheld in 2019 with a trivial way to soft mod the hardware has been awesome. Perhaps it's time you too went back and took another look at the Nintendo DSi. Well guys, that will do it for this video. Let me know what you thought about the Nintendo DSi in the comments below. I think it's an awesome handheld and one that's worth revisiting in 2019. It certainly has a lot better features over the DS and the DS Lite. And in my opinion, it has better screens than the 3DS. So it makes it an ideal handheld for running your homebrew and modding. And with the memory pit exploit that was just released by Shutterbug2000, it makes modding this system quite simply the most easiest thing you could do and it costs you absolutely zero dollars unless you obviously need to buy an SD card you know to utilize it of course but you know most people have SD cards laying around in their drawers so check out the DSi with the memory pit exploit and I want to say a big thank you to Shutterbug2000 for reaching out to me and getting a hold of me and discussing through the exploit I understand how it works and he was very very helpful with providing me with information on the exploit and things in the DSi scene in general. And I'm going to leave a link to his Twitch TV channel below. So hit him up with a Twitch sub and let him know that I sent you. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.